this way since she taught me this one. Go get a lug of beans, a lug of beans, and have a few for me. <laughs> Is that a good one? KG6LYI. Ham radio. You know, if you're doing any kind of prepping or any kind of uh, preparedness or just want to be ready or if you want to communicate with the outside world when everything else doesn't work, um, ham radio is probably one of the best ways to do this. Uh, the frequencies available for most folks are what they call a 2 meter band and the 70 centimeter band and there's also a, a 10 meter band. In a six meter band. Anyway, there's lots of lots of bands you can communicate on. Uh, if you're doing handy talkies, you want to have something that you can communicate with from uh, here to say, you know, across town, maybe five, ten miles, uh, and really get communications. Uh, this is one way to do it. Anyway, these are Oshan radios, made in China, like most everything else these days, unfortunately. Um, they're small, compact little radios. Uh, they are 5 watt output, much better than CB. Uh, they do, do, do have uh, repeater systems. You can talk basically around the world with them uh, through the repeater system. There's one system called WinSys, Wind System. And it, uh, I've actually heard people talking from uh, uh, north of London, England, uh, Arizona, Texas, all over the place. Uh, these little guys uh, receive well. I haven't really tried to transmit much. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm new to the game, so I'm kind of listening and getting used to what, uh, what goes on. But in an emergency situation where you don't have any communications, if the cell towers are out, if the repeaters are out, if, if uh, you know, the SHFT, you know, the, or SHTF, that, that stuff, uh, these little guys will help you communicate with the outside world. Uh, again, they're not the best in the world. They, they do make better ones. Uh, Ye Yezu is a Japanese company. They make uh, really good handhelds. They're quite a bit more expensive. These, these run about $150 a piece. Depends on where you get them. Um, these are the KGUV6Ds, if you can see that in there, um, which is Oshan's uh, most popular radio right now. They do make a 2D and a, a 1D, 2D. I think, and then the 60, I believe. Uh, these little guys uh, do a real good job. They, you can monitor uh, most frequencies, uh, but you only transmit on the uh, what they call the two meter band and the, and the 70 centimeter band, which is 146, 144 megahertz uh, to 148 megahertz, and the 70 centimeters is 420 megahertz to 450 megahertz. Uh, they have a band plan, they have all kinds of stuff that you really need to know. And, I, and like I told you before, the test you take uh, to be an FCC licensed uh, operator, uh, control operator, is a pool of 200 questions that you take 35 questions from, and it's a random drawing. I think they have 10 different tests, and they have 10 different sets of questions on them. Uh, not that difficult. Um, I studied online, actually, uh, uh, person named Mary Viking. Uh, it's M-E-R-R-Y-V-I-K-I-N-G. Uh, he has tutorials and if you just type in uh, ham radio test or ham radio test uh, prep, uh, his site will come up. Uh, he did a really good job. He actually he covers every question. It kind of gives you an explanation behind the question as to why it's on the test and if you need to memorize that one because it's not one that you can you know uh, associate with anything or how to associate things. He does a really good job. It worked for me. Um, I took uh, several online t uh, practice tests and eventually got to the point where I could pass them at 91% all the time. Um, I always missed one or two sections. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not an electronic genius. I mean, I'm good with uh, wood. <laughs> I'm good with, uh, you know, metallic cartridges and that sort of thing. Uh, but electronics, uh, really not my, not my gig. So some of the stuff was pretty, uh, pretty difficult to get over as far as uh, learning uh, ohms and uh, wattages, uh, how, to, how to figure out what a ticker thing, uh, how, how the calculations worked out. But once you got the calculations down, once you understood them, they were pretty simple. I mean, if, if you did any kind of basic math, you can get this. It's not, not difficult. 
Um, like I said before, the passing, I believe you could miss uh, eight or nine of the 35, it'll still pass, 70, I think it's 71 or 72%. Um, it's not a hard test. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time. It took me an hour on one Saturday. Uh, they have uh, the AARL, which is these guys. That's the Amateur Radio Relay League. They have what they call volunteer examiners who go out and actually perform the function of the FCC in testing you to become a licensed operator. Um, and like many other guys talked about, you can actually own these without having a license and listen all you want. It's just the transmitting side is where you have to have the license. If you want to talk to somebody, actually push the button and transmit and talk to somebody, you have to have a license. Uh, and like I said, $15, uh, one Saturday, a uh, little bit of of practice time, I, it's, it probably takes you, I don't know, four to five hours worth of uh, homework, shall we say, to, to go through all the uh, of Mary Vikings videos. Because uh, he goes through all the sections of the test. It, he tells you what the test is about, why, why it does it this way, the whole thing. And if you want to go for the general class, which is the next step up, you can study for both those and, and take, the, take both tests for the same one price. So, um, on the licensing side of it, it, it's a little complicated, but it's not horrific. It's not as bad as it used to be. You do not have to know Morse code anymore. Uh, they took that section off in 2007, I believe. So you have to know basics about radio and electronics, and the, the different books or sites will tell you what you need to know. AARL, the league, has books and manuals if, you, if you're a book reader and you do better that way, they have books for that. If you get it better off of somebody talking to you about it and looking at it on the internet, that there's an instruction for that. Uh, the books, of course, cost a little bit. The online instruction does not, other than having the time to do it. So if you want to get out and talk to somebody, uh, these, these little guys are really easy to program. Um, in this one here, I've got about 50 channels programmed uh, so it scans all of them um, you might hear some of this stuff and again you can you can tune it in tune it out you don't have to listen to it if you don't want to um, these radios are meant for being outside they're not waterproof or water resistant by any means uh, the uh, Particular one I'm thinking about, the Yezu, I think it's the FT70, I believe. It's what they would have done. I'd have to look it up. It's a uh, water resistant to three meters in water. So you can actually you can actually dunk it in water three meters, pull it out, and it'll still function properly. These are not designed for that. I mean, you can you know get them in the rain, that kind of thing. Uh, but the idea is to keep them dry, of course. They're not designed for the for the, the water. Again, these are $150 radios. The Yezu, I'm speaking about the 7R, I believe it is, is almost $400. Uh, it also has three bands rather than two. This, this, one, this one here only covers two bands. The other one covers three bands. I think it's the, I, I'm going to guess, but I, I know it's a two meter, 70 centimeter. And I think it's the uh, 23 centimeter, uh, 222 megahertz band. Anyway, uh, enough about the, what they are. Um, in getting into this, I've, I've watched several videos online uh, talking about different ways to program these, what repeaters you get on, how to do things. Um, these, these little books here, the repeater directories, are really handy. Um, if you look up a particular town, I'm just going to pick one at random here. Um, this is in North Carolina. And uh, let's look at Andrews right here. If you can read that. Uh, the megahertz for this repeater is 147.045. It's a minus input, so it's going to take 600 kilohertz off of that. And then they have a thing called a PL tone, which is a way to select that particular repeater over anything else. And this selects, it allows your radio to select that, that repeater, so it sends that tone carrier back and forth to open up your channel so you can actually hear it or transmit on it. And this one, the tone is 151.4, and then that's the call sign, and there's the uh, sponsor. Even though I don't live here, I'm going to program this station, this repeater, into my 
radio so I can hear it. Uh, if I was in North Carolina, which I'm not, but that's what I want to do just to give you an idea. Anyway, I'm going to program 147.045 with a minus input and 151.4 PL tone. Okay, you see here there's a uh, channel frequency mode. You can be in name mode, frequency mode, channel mode, channel frequency. So you're going to be in this frequency mode here. Then we're going to go to, oops, let's go back to that. Go back to frequency. You got to do this pretty quickly because they they time out really fast. Push menu again. That sets it in frequency mode. Now we're going to program our 147.065. Okay. Then we're going to go back to menu. Okay, we want uh, menu 25. Excuse me. That's the, the shift offset. Now it's off. Whoops. It's off right now. Need to make it to plus or minus. We need minus. Okay, so then shift menu again. Then we're going to go to menu 26. Uh, excuse me, menu 24, sorry. The offset, push menu, we need 0600. That's the offset for that particular category. Whoops. Exit menu. Menu 006. That's the offset. Okay. Then we have a PL tone. So I'm going to go back to menu. I believe it's 15. Receiving CTC tone. It's off right now. We need to go to 151. Point four hertz. And that what that is is a subtone that allows this radio to receive that transmission. Okay. If I wanted to transmit over that, uh, it'd be 14 maybe. 16. I could change that re receive to the same. Now, in most cases, it's only the transmit that you need to transmit to get to catch that carrier. You usually don't need the receiving side of that to get the uh, to get the carrier to open up because you can receive it without it. Some some are are require that some don't. You have to just test it out on your particular channel to see if it works. Okay, then we're going to go to um, let's see which one is it. Need to save the information now. We're going to go to memory channel, push menu, and it's going to pick the first available. When well, that dash disappears, you can see that. There, disappeared. We can push menu again. Now that particular information is saved on that channel. So if I go out of that, I go to that channel. If I had that repeater in my area, it would pick it up. So they're really not not hard to program. There is a uh, computer program to get it to do it. Not all that difficult, but it's just something you have to get used to doing. Uh, all of them have a, a method of getting the manual information in there. Uh, this has about 20, I'll say 29 different menu options. A lot of them have to do with the base radio itself, but the ones I showed you have to do with the offset and all the other things you have to do for each channel. Uh, and if you make a mistake on each channel, you have to erase that channel and re-enter the information because it doesn't allow you to fix it. So that's one quirky thing I don't really care about, you know, with the way they, they make these, but it isn't that much difficult. If you know what ch channel is and you've got a book that has the information in it, you're, you're good to go. Um, I went ahead and um, got a carry bag for my extra stuff. I have an extra, extra battery pack that I got. They're about $35 or $40. I can't remember which. Um, got an external antenna for the times I want to be uh, potentially out in the wilderness. I want to get, get out somewhere. Um, the bag is, allows me to put all this in, for, all this in here. The, the charger pack, uh, got a microphone for it. The extra extra battery pack and a repeater directory, so I can take it with me in one convenient package. Uh, this is from uh, County.com. It's called their Meritac Extreme Bag. It's their their smallest uh, bag they make for this. Uh, it's a really really well well built bag. It's about forty dollars. Um, 
has lots of room in it. Two compartments, two compartments in here as you can see. Has another uh, Velcro department over here on the side to store store things in. Nice little bag. Um, USN ER doc turned me on to this. Uh, so I went and got one of those, uh, really good site. They have a ton of other things on there, uh, such as these breacher bars. Uh, if you've ever seen these before, they're just a, just a steel bar. The EOD uses them. Um, and I did my own custom wrap on there, just so you don't have to hang on that steel. Uh, it's got a little lanyard type thing you can kind of hang on to it with if you're, if you're trying to bang into something or whatever. Uh, pry bar, it uses a pry bar, breacher bar. Um, you know, not, they're not real sharp. I mean, it's not a not that kind of a weapon, but um, as far as using as a pry bar, you know, getting into things or whatever, they're they're a great little bar. Uh, they also have these EOD bars. Uh, they call them Pico bars, little guys. And they're just little pry bars for getting into little things. If you have to, you know, if you have to get under and wedge something out, you can you, you can see it's bent like that. They're they're good little bars also. Anyway. Um, that's County Com. They have a lot of good things there. Uh, fair pricing. Um, sh they ship if they have it in stock. The shipping is, I mean, right now they they get it right out. So I'm very happy with uh, with their service and they they've done a really good, good job. Um, the Oshan radios I got from uh, Am through Amazon.com. I think they were out $150. I give or take. I'm, I'm there. It could be anywhere now because these things get more popular. Um, they they do get more expensive. Uh, same with the book, the repeater book. Uh, you can get these from directly from ARRL, the Amateur Radio Relay League. They have a great site online. Uh, a lot of information there as far as uh, learning about uh, the different kinds of radios and, and uh, what, the, what the, the hobby is all about. Um, and that's ARRL.org is where you want to go. And they have lots of, uh, lots of stuff you can look up in there. So anyway, that's a little bit about the radios and uh, why I got them, and and uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please, please quiz away. I'm, I'll be glad to answer whatever I can, or I'll send you the right direction. You know, I thank all you guys for for watching and and uh, your subscribers out there. It's been uh, really phenomenal that you guys uh, you know care about what I'm talking about. So uh, glad to have you on board. Uh, so here we go, Papa Bravo out. <laughs>